Hey photographers, I enjoy interacting with you and I'm always happy to answer your questions and comments. Now, you regularly ask what equipment I use, sometimes for a specific task like recording a camera screen, and sometimes more general photo taking or video recording. Well, let me take you for a tour of the MarTech kitchen to show you how I cook up my videos. Well, okay, <laughs> it's actually the YouTube Space Toronto Studio Kitchen, and this space is available for free if you have enough subscribers to qualify. So. Please accept my thanks for allowing me to shoot here. Sadly, however, it is closing soon. And I should say that although these are the processes and gear I use, I'm not sure I can wholeheartedly endorse all of them. My purchase decision often involves practicality or cost. Not all of these are my first choice or best in class. History plays a role too. Some of the things listed below are due for upgrade or replacement. And full disclosure, I've provided links to most of this kit in the description below as affiliate links to B&H Photo and or to Amazon. If you use those links to buy something, I'll receive a small commission to support my work on this channel. However, I would be just as happy if you supported your local camera store like I do. Now, Let's start at the beginning with a cup of coffee. I won't detail my coffee making process. That starts with roasting green beans. I write my scripts using Microsoft OneNote, using an Apple desktop and notebook computers, and my iPad. Now, I never have to think about saving anything, and it has fast search to find stuff. I like OneNote, not only because it's still free, but because it syncs across multiple devices. So I can pick up where I left off, and I always have the latest copy with me. Now, I'm typically shooting with the camera that I'm reviewing, and in nearly all cases, the camera is on loan from the manufacturer or their Canadian media agency. And I've been reviewing tech products for over 20 years, and I've never had anyone refuse me a loan because they didn't like my previous review. I don't feel any need to be nice. I do feel a great need to be honest with you and with them. In general, my reviews are filled with the good and the bad. Of course, I need another camera when the camera being reviewed is in the shot, like the intros and extras to my video. And this is the opportunity to introduce you to Paul, who's the camera operator today. My channel's mostly a one-human show, but I do rely on my friends Paul, Sonam, Doug, and of course my partner Kim to assist when I'm in front of the camera. Paul is shooting this video with YouTube's Sony AS7 II. Now, this year, 2019, when I'm not shooting at YouTube, I've been recording primarily with the Fujifilm X-H1 with the 16-55 to lens and the battery grip. And when I'm not reviewing another camera, it's my go-to for stills also. I'm very happy with this solution. It's a good size, it doesn't overheat, the physical controls make it easy to manage, color's good, and the output is high quality. But please note that I do have X-T3 Envy. Now, for shooting video outside, an ND filter is essential. To maintain control over your shutter speed and aperture, I have a Tiffin Square kit, as well as several B&W filter mount versions. For the close-ups of a camera's buttons and dials, I use a Sony a6300. With the 30mm macro lens, it focuses very close. And it works so well that although I've considered getting an X-mount macro lens for the X-H1, I don't actually feel any need to. But I do also have a6400 Envy. Now, you may be wondering about SD cards, as Majid did recently. I would suggest you buy a reputable quality brand. If you have a good camera, don't compromise with a cheap card. You will regret that. Now, I buy either Panasonic or SanDisk. Now, there is a difference between support and requires. If your camera's writing speed, either for video or burst, requires UHS-2 by that type with V60 or 300 megabyte data rate. Your camera may support but not require UHS-2, so in that case, you're just as well to buy the UHS-1 type with the U3 designation 95 megabytes. That's more than enough for 100 megabit video recording rates. 
Now, for recording the menus and screens, I use an Atomus Ninja Inferno recorder connected to the camera's HDMI output. As cameras have many different size HDMI ports, I have all three sizes for the camera end and backups. As these cables don't have a great deal of long-term reliability, to reduce the strain on the usually smaller camera end, I use a Tether Tools Jerk Stopper. Now the Ninja is also useful as a backup recorder and a monitor. It's much easier to see a shot and check focus on a larger monitor. Now for cameras that don't have HDMI out or where the HDMI out doesn't include the menu, I fashioned a rig that mounts the A6300 with the macro lens and a quick release plate for the review camera so that they move together. Now this rig consists of a shape riser, small rig rails, and two Manfrotto 323 quick release plates and a wooden camera rod clamp. A trick I picked up from Billy of the Fuji guys for recording the viewfinder, an iPhone works pretty well to get in the viewfinder. I've tried Android phones, not as good. However, I'm still looking for a better solution, both to control the exposure and focus, but also just to keep the two stable together. Your suggestions are welcome. I choose my words carefully, so I use a teleprompter to read the script. Now, after a conversation with Paul Chatto, he gave me a 3D printed mount that holds my iPhone as a teleprompter using a rubber band on the lens. But I find it simpler to use a phone mount on the flash shoe to hold the iPhone. The software is Apple's Pages running in presenter mode. And this is a much better solution, particularly in daylight, than the solutions that I used to use. So just before shooting, I copy the script segments I need from OneNote to Pages on the desktop, saving the file to iCloud and opening it on the iPhone. Uh, incidentally, the whole rig sits on a Manfrotto 546 legs and 504 HD head. Now, I also use the Manfrotto 190 legs with 701 head for tabletop work. My experience says, that you will buy inexpensive tripods and be disappointed until you buy a good one. Don't waste your money. And when it comes to tripods, I have Nitro Envy. Now for exterior or moving shots, I use a Ronin S. If you want a stable shot, there's no in-camera stabilization that comes anything close to using a motorized gimbal. As for lighting, for tabletop work, I use the Draycast S series. For larger scenes, the Westcott D5 with soft boxes. And I've recently added the Moman MFL 03 on camera LED light, which they sent me for review and told me to keep. It's tiny but powerful. Almost too powerful. For audio, I'm wearing a Voice Technologies VT506 lapel mic. It's taped to the inside of my glasses and it's connected to the camera with its long cable. I've been using it since VT sent it over for me to try out. They told me to keep it. I do have Sennheiser MKE 600 Shotgun Envy, but as I don't usually have a boom operator, that's not usually a viable solution. Although the lapel mic isn't as crisp, it's a little better at reducing ambient noise. I use the Sony MDR7506 headphones for monitoring. Now, I used to use a wireless mic, but now, when I can't connect to the camera, I have a second set of glasses with a Sennheiser clip mic that connects to and records on an iPhone using the Apogee Meta Recorder. If you have not tried dual system recording, syncing the video to the audio is easier than you think. Don't be intimidated. After you've done it twice, you'll wonder why you thought it was so hard. I use a clapper slate YouTube gave me at a shoot in the Paris studio. And when there are multiple speakers in a room, I use a Tascam DR70D recorder and Sony ECM44 wired lapel mics with XLR connectors. For color reference, I use the DSC Labs Cameline front box series, as well as the Chroma Selfie. In the studio, it helps to capture a custom white balance, and while color correcting, it's a reference to adjust your colors. Uh, when I get home, I transfer all the files I recorded from the SD cards and the Atomus SSD drive to an external drive 
on my Mac, and then I import them into Final Cut Pro 10 for editing. I'm using the current version, 10.4.6. I use a well-worn Logic keyboard with the Final Cut keycaps, and I monitor on M-Audio DX4s. I have a ton of storage on multiple external drives. I back up everything and delete nothing. I record voiceovers using a Rode NT-USB, and for that purpose, I read the script from my iPad. One extraordinarily useful device is Google Home, especially when I need to check a fact or convert from metric to imperial. Hey Google, what's 484 grams in ounces? 484 grams is equal to 17.073 I have Bell Fiber ounces. to the Home with one gig internet service. Although most of my devices are on Wi-Fi, the iMac is connected to the router using Ethernet. Excellent for video uploads and downloads. Well, hopefully that covers it and answers your questions, but I do welcome your relevant questions and civil comments below. Oh wait, this shirt. Lips and shirt makers here in Toronto. Thanks for watching. And if you like what I do on this channel, please take a second and subscribe.